Oof, I was sweating. So Miguel connected, good news. So, you know, if you have four panelists, you know, every individual panelist is very, very important. And the constellation of panelists that we have today for me is an um, important one to have. So Miguel, I assume that you are online with us. And um, Dario, um, yes, uh, I feel a bit embarrassed. It's the third session in a row run by GTC. Um, just to avoid um, any um, suspicions in that uh, context, uh, we have not manipulated the agenda. Um, that just happened. We have been asked to moderate and we are happy to assist. I think it's a great virtual conference these days. Um, the best I have seen so far, and uh, I'm super proud to be here, and I'm also super proud to have the panelists with us that should be online. Some words uh, related to me, not uh, all the people that are in the audience know me. My name is Jose Garcia. I'm the founder and CEO of Global Tech Consult. We are a niche consultancy company that is supporting the whole ecosystem, enterprise and service providers and operators. We are mainly based in Central Europe. Myself, I'm based out of Munich in Germany. And from here, I'm saying hello to the Americas, to the African community, to Eastern Europe, to the Middle East and to India and region. So we have people from all over the world currently connected. That's the beauty of running virtual conferences. And this is actually something that is for me a big, big plus compared to the previous face-to-face uh, -face, um, conferences. So people have really, are just a link away to join and uh, have it uh, much easier to, to participate without traveling. So we have um, a topic today is related to operators, is related to operators in Europe, and obviously everything in the context of messaging, what else? It's all about math, math connects, it's messaging, touching many different areas, still everything somehow linked to each other. And um, I would like to do a little exercise now. And this little exercise will be related to testing the audio settings. And um, I think the best way to do it is just giving the panelists the chance to introduce themselves. So panelists, I don't see you, but I would like to see and hear you. Would you please just speak up and introduce yourself? So Mitch, um, you go first. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm Mitchell Cockmore here at Telefonica Global Solutions. Uh, I work with our countries around the region uh, here in Latin America and also in Europe, uh, principally on launching RCS and also on anti-fraud initiatives for A to P. So just before we pass on to, to, to Fabio, Mitch, uh, uh, do I get it right? You, you are a Brit. This is what uh, it sounds like. Yes, I am you a Brit. In Brazil. <laughs> you, you are in Brazil and you're working for a Spanish company. Correct. Yes, nice okay. and simple. Okay, so everything normal, simple is to say. So Fabio, don't tell me that you are a Brazilian with, a, with an Italian father that is living in France or something like that because nobody will believe. Yeah, I mean, and uh, working for a Swedish company. So <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what it is. So <laughs> hello, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm Fabio. Uh, I work as a messaging specialist for Telecare here, the international arm of Telegroup, um, and uh, I'm the biggest IP provider in the world, and a newcomer in the messaging space. And I'm super happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. Okay, cool. So, Miguel, what about you? Will you keep it uh, nice and simple, or is it uh, a bit more complex? Uh, it's even more complex. So, I'm Spanish and Dutch, living in Luxembourg at the moment, and moving to Doha in two weeks. <laughs> oh my God, Miguel, you are you are very quick in terms of your developments, private and, and professional. You know, I was not aware about the, the latest ones, but congratulations. You know, I'm Thank sure you. that you have good reasons for doing what you're doing. So good luck with everything. And Jerome, last but not least, I guess in your case, it should be a bit simpler, or? 
Yes, hello, I'm Jerome. So I'm, I'm heading the, the messaging activity of Bix. Uh, so we are not new uh, in messaging and we have been helping uh, operators since uh, more than 10 years in that uh, in that field following the evolution of uh, P2P and then A2P. And, um, and I'm glad to see what the, the market has to bring and to discuss with you today. Good, good. Uh, we, we are not surprised uh, when you say that you are not new in messaging, Bix. Uh, you know, we're very familiar with uh, Bix in the context of, of messaging. You are one of the few traditional P2B hubs, correct, uh, Jerome? Indeed. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, something very relevant in the ecosystem, still relevant. Yeah. Um, so I think this is a great um, positioning to be for, for a market player. Great, so good to see all of you uh, in good health as far as I can judge. So um, today we speak about um, operators, messaging. There is one aspect that we would like to touch base and is about messaging monetization. Messaging monetization, I think um, in the context of uh, looking into the European um, market, it is interesting. Uh, I would say because there is a geographic um, difference, you know, when you look into the different markets in the world. Um, what about monetization of messaging in 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 Europe? Uh, Fabio, you, you're working for for a European MNO group. I, I think you personally are working on on on, on the topic, so you are really hands on. Um, what, what, what is your, your your view? Is is there still room to optimize the monetization? It, is it more like bringing it one more time, or or or, or is it like find, finding finding um, a fair pricing that has not been reached yet? Um, I think monetization in the end uh, has uh, several arms. I would say. Um, um, we we can, of course, there are people that work on monetization just by looking into the pricing model or the pricing strategy where uh, other groups are trying to actually to um, make services a little bit better, working on quality, investing in security. So I, I believe that monetization is very um, linked to security as a first point because still there are a lot of fraud um, available in the market, gray routes, um, or even um, security that will lead security problems that will lead to quality issues, not only on the MNO side, but also on the customer side. So when we talk about monetization, I believe we need to follow a few steps. That's what we are trying to do, right? First of all, starting with the um, uh, promoting better security services together with the MNO, trying to uh, limit everything that is actually harmful to not only the mobile operator, but again, to the enterprise customers, to the final subscriber, and then applying the corrective strategies to um, optimize the whole monetization. That may also include some pricing strategy, why not? You know, but it really depends on um, a country to country, even regulation. And I mean, there are several tricks that we can still play, but it's not as simple as it sounds. It has few steps that needs to be completed in order to reach a monetization that will bring um, um, real value to the mobile operator. That's the way we see. Okay, uh, so there is uh, one statement um, that uh, I keep in my mind. It's like he, he mentioned, Fabio mentioned the correct strategy. Yeah. So obviously the question is correct strategy. Is this something that is applicable to whole Europe or whole world, you know? Um, what are the different notions when it comes to the correct strategy? What are the different parameters that um, can be um, actually played here? Um, Jerome, uh, what, what, what's your view? I mean, I mentioned before the fact that BIX is a traditional P2P hub. The P2P hubs had an easy life. I mean, they just uh, fixed the, the prices, um, I don't know, six cents or five cents, somewhere in the range and um, they protected the markets, you know, the, the competition was not that fierce. Um, A2P uh, is suffering very different dynamics. I say suffering sounds a bit negative, you know, but it's exposed to very different dynamics. Uh, what's, what's your view 
on on what should be considered um, you know an intelligent uh, monetization uh, strategy for for the operators well, it's true that if we look at the, the the messaging market dynamic over the past uh, the past 10 years we we have seen that the strategy of the uh, the operator has uh, evolved a lot huh? because the mm. a2p was a market with uh, i recall 10 years ago almost a free a free uh, free market with very uh, extremely low rates and then gradually um, operator realized that uh, it's a, it's a resource that they can uh, probably monetize better uh, by applying the the, the right uh, technology and the uh, and the right uh, and the right strategy so i think today we also uh, should be careful when we look at the the trend on the market we we see that many uh, in in many uh, in many markets they the, after raising the price at the level of a B2P, as you mentioned, around six cents, the, the market is growing up to eight, nine, ten, and even above 10, uh, 10 cents, which is, I think, a, a risk uh, because that's a short term, of course, an opportunity to uh, to bring a significant uh, significant revenue for the operator. But on the other hand, uh, we need to to keep uh, messaging as an accessible uh, service. And uh, I recall participating to a to a panel with. Uh, a gentleman from Google who mentioned that the the, the, the inflation of the of the, of the rates uh, also uh, leads David. companies David. Uh, like Google, yes, David exactly, yes. Mm. Uh, to 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 diversify their sourcing or find alternative technologies. So I think here we uh, the MNO needs also to to find the right balance, the right uh, uh, price to the right service. Uh, it's, mm. I think it's also important to make a distinction between the type of service and uh, you have. Uh, you have the OTP traffic, which is uh, which is critical, which has a value, and which can be priced probably differently from the the campaign traffic, which has a, a different uh, audience and a different uh, target. And for mm -hmm. that, the MNO needs to have the right uh, strategy, the right partner to to support them, and also uh, they need to to have the right technology to be able to uh, to manage this this traffic in a in a proper way. And I would mm -hmm. add that regulation, especially in Europe, plays a role. Uh, mm -hmm. So. I mean, in, in many in many markets, the operator they are not free to set the, the the price the way they want. They are not free to to block or control the market the way they want. Uh, they still need to allow transit. They still need to 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 let or they cannot block sim sim farm sim box as easy as they as they could. And in other markets, we also see that regulators uh, even recently they, they they tend to control the spam uh, more closely and uh, and ask the operator to have uh, to adapt their strategy to 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 welcome and to control this traffic uh, differently. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Europe is a is a is a vast continent with uh, with with various situations. But I think that's the the, the key element we can uh, we should take into account into a proper monetization uh, strategy. Okay, um, so the audience is super interested. They're coming up with a number of questions that are very much related to messaging pricing. Um, we will get back um, to the, uh, on the questions a bit uh, later on. But um, uh, first of all, I would like to um, have Mitch commenting. Uh, I mean, Mitch, you, you're, you're responsible now for um, um, operations in the Latin American market. Uh, mm -hmm. At the same time, you're working for a European uh, company. So you are involved into, the, into group uh, operations at the same time. So you can follow the strategy that is applied in different geographies and what would you say is 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 the main um, difference between europe probably and, um, and and latam when it comes to to pricing i mean obviously price level is is different but is there any different strategy are there different parameters that um, play a role when it comes to to monetize um, uh, messaging Yep. So um, I think from my experience, the trends that I've kind of seen consistently over the past kind of five years is that our, our messaging teams in Europe tend to be a lot more product focus, which actually tends to make them focus on simplifying commercial models because they're focused on, on the product element. Whereas in Latin America, we kind of have more generalist teams who have to look after a broader portfolio of products within the business, uh, meaning that they're kind of more commercially focused rather than on how to necessarily uh, evolve the product from a technical perspective, which means that we actually sometimes have uh, somewhat more complicated commercial models, things like, you know, volume, volume, um, 
volume bands, etc., rather than having a flat flat rate. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, to answer Colin's initial question, you were talking about. I mean, I think uh, there is more that can be done to squeeze out, you know, mon monetization potential. Uh, and I think the countries here in, in Latin America are doing that. So there's um, a kind of trend we're seeing that countries are looking to differentiate between national and international traffic. Um, so that's something we're seeing. Um, and mm -hmm. um, But I think we're getting to a point now where really product evolution will be needed to continue to monetize A2P traffic. Um, and that obviously, that could be RCS, but it also could be other things. So we've talked over the years about, you know, being able to bundle messaging together with other services, things like mm -hmm. uh, SIM swap protections, to perhaps think about products that we could think about as kind of secure messaging. Um, so there are other, other options available, but I think we are reaching a point where we need to think about more product focused uh, initiatives to monetize A2P further. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what's the situation right now in LATAM? Uh, is there still an upward potential in terms of um, the revenues that can be generated with the current SMS, uh, Mitch? Yep. So um, I think two trends we've seen that are interesting is that throughout COVID, um, despite an initial wobble in the kind of first two mm -hmm. months where we weren't really sure where we were going, uh, messaging has proved resilient so i think mm -hmm. that that's a very positive sign and we are continuing to grow throughout this period mm -hmm. uh, and i think in the countries where we are seeing progress in rcs first suggestions seem that rcs new revenue will not necessarily be cannibalizing a to b messaging also and that mm -hmm. it really could be complementary revenue rather than a migration of traffic from one channel to another. So I think those those two kind of insights yeah. really suggest that actually ATP messaging has a long way to go yet. Okay, yeah. okay. And just um, make a reference to, to what Jerome said. Um, to what extent is, is, is the regulation relevant when it comes to setting pricing in, in LATAM, Mitch? Um, I think for me, my experience, regulation has actually been a bigger influence in terms of our capacity to control sim farms and great routes. So that's where it really mm -hmm. has an impact on our potential. Uh, in terms of controlling pricing, um, we've seen in markets like Colombia, um, and I think to a certain extent now in Chile, that if the market and the operators don't reach a kind of mutual agreement about what is the right way to go to you know, where is the happy middle ground between operators wanting to maybe raise the price and aggregators being willing to, to, to kind of work with that. Um, we can see that regulator, regulators can intervene. And in that case, um, uh, the market situations can become more difficult for everyone. So for instance, in mm -hmm. Columbia, the value of messaging. Uh, it's I like mean, zero. Yeah, hitting the floor is a dramatic way of putting it, but uh, it's yeah. not been favorable for anyone. So uh, I think the push and pull between uh, the market and the operators find the right price is essential. And I think it's important that it's an ongoing dialogue so that we don't mm -hmm. kind of um, break down the market. Yeah. Okay. Miguel, um, I mean, your background is, is very interesting. You have been working through not long ago for 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 orange actually for a european mno now you switch to um an operator group that is uh, primarily active in the middle east and southeast asia um, so um, i think you have a very unique perspective uh, when it comes to comparing the, the the pricing policies and the pricing strategies of um, the different regions what 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 um, is is your perception, uh, Miguel? Um, I think the experience I have, of course, that the um, European market is much more stable and less dynamic than other markets. Very stable price without a lot of fluctuations and uh, a less um, quick uh, evolution in use cases. Whereas the certainly the Asia Pacific market has been traditionally mark from a value perspective and a global perspective um, and there of course is a lot more dynamism and also stronger increases in prices so in one of our markets uh, this has been extremely uh, high increase almost doubled by one of the colleagues in the market uh, we work uh, with uh, which has a significant impact as it's a big market uh, and there of course uh, the feedback from the market is uh, rather negative and 
um, as Jerome said, uh, the big users are looking for alternatives and the impact of that over the overall market is that 30, 40% of the traffic uh, disappears overnight because they switch off use cases which are not uh, critical. Okay. In, in interesting. Um, in, in, in that context, before we move on, we have uh, one question from, from the audience, actually from uh, Yasser. I had the pleasure with him uh, this um, afternoon. So uh, the question is, what parameters do operators use to determine how best to monetize and price our A2P messaging? I think we mentioned a couple of parameters already. Shall we just kind of summarize it for Yasser and probably for audio and uh, other audience uh, participants? If, if, I think, um, well, if, if I may, I think indeed we, we mentioned a few points. I, I think the, the, what, what is allowed by, uh, by regulation is one parameter to be checked by the, by the operator and who, what they can do with, uh, with the, the traffic from, from local aggregator, what they can do with the, with the traffic from the other operator in the country. If they can make a different differentiate the pricing between the the international and the domestic traffic, so that's that's one parameter to 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 take into account. Uh, I think that's also, you know, very often I see operator when when to, to determine which price they can determine they they ask their partner huh, their, their 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 what 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 level they can uh, which to which level they can go and and what to what level their partner can commit to. Um, I, I think here. We also need to be careful, but also make the the, the connection with what the the, the customer, uh, in that case the enterprise and the OTT, are ready to pay, and uh, and also take into account the different type of traffic. Uh, I mean, you cannot set you, you can maybe try to monetize better uh, some critical OTP traffic, but be uh, more uh, aggressive when it comes to campaign if you want to to really take the the, the maximum benefit of the of the A2P messaging today. Yeah, we have taken an approach where we uh, minimize uh, the marketing approach and uh, only focus. why? Because we, our main focus from a group perspective is protecting also our customer. We've seen an evolution over the years that uh, there's less messaging, so less spam. Because, of course, as a customer, we don't want to receive marketing messages like 20, 30 a day in some markets when this was not monetized. When you said like 10 years ago it was free, you got like 50, 60 SMS per day from a marketing perspective because the price was so low and that's something you can't want because at the end of the day as a customer i just want to see the messages which are relevant to me so that's also an important responsibility we have as operators to protect our customers and we have the regulation in place that we have the responsibility that only the messages which are uh, allowed and that we have to stop the ones which are not allowed so this mechanism is something that we have in a lot of our markets okay yeah, no surprise that uh, spam is going down, Miguel. If uh, prices are set in some of your markets at seven cents or eight cents or whatever, so this obviously is removing any any incentive, which is a positive effect of increasing prices from my perspective. Um, mm -hmm. Clearly, um, I have to comment something personal here. Um, I mean, I see a number of markets going up to 9, 10, 11 cents, depending if they have uh, signed exclusivity or not. You know, then there is an aggregator reselling and even a higher price. Um, at the same time, what I'm missing uh, are any activities that relate to um, a better productization of, of the messaging uh, service or um, to um, improving the features that are supported um, by the operator. If I look into LATAM, you still have many markets where you don't have any delivery receipt, you know, but the prices are still going up to give you, let's say, an extreme example. Yeah? What, is, what is your view on that? My personal view is, you know, if you increase the price, you should somehow also keep focus on the, on the service quality at the same time to make it like a nicer customer experience, you know, or enterprise experience, if we want to be more specific. What's your view? I agree. Uh, I think that is uh, a fair a fair point. Uh, I think in practice what we see is that 
uh, A to P messaging is the backbone of of many of our operators, uh, and therefore, when when needed in hard times, it's often called upon uh, to help sustain other areas. Right, which is why I think sometimes we face uh, sudden price changes. Um, but I th and I think there's more that could be done, like you say, in terms of product, and a lot of it sometimes basic, right? What you're saying in terms of delivery ports, um, alphanumeric sender IDs as an option as well. Um, but it, it depends on the kind of makeup of each market, the expertise we have, and, and the focus of each, each country's strategy. Uh, I think, like I mentioned, I, the trend I see is that in Europe, we have that product focus to make sure mm -hmm. that the product is living up to the price. Mm -hmm. uh, in Latin America, I think we have that in some places, but we don't have that everywhere um, because of you know, limitations internally and you know day-to-day -day business. Um, but I think that that would definitely be ideal. And I think also just to complement um, the question we had about uh, parameters for pricing, I think it's also from an operator perspective, what in many ways dictates the pricing is also our, our product portfolio for messaging. So for instance, I can think of at least one market recently that launched um, or activated USS, USSD as part of their messaging yeah. offering. Uh, and this is a country that has SMS and RCS already live. Um, mm -hmm. And initially, you know, what was recommended was that, you know, was a, a specific price for USSD, which actually happened to be more than RCS. So actually when they looked at the portfolio, they're like, well, hang on a minute, RCS is a much richer channel. So therefore we can't realistically price USSD even higher than that. So actually they brought the price down of USSD to actually have a, a kind of progressive pricing plan, which made sense based on the level of interactivity that the channel would provide. Mm -hmm. um, and I think obviously each country has its own portfolio. So each, some countries have a national price and international price. Some countries only have a domestic rate. Um, and therefore that's, I think, why we see the price vary so much across you know one region such as LATAM is because they're each working within a different regulatory scenario, but also within a different messaging portfolio, which provides different kind of levers on that price. Mm -hmm. Very interesting um, aspect. Um, Mitch, I repeat, you said uh, to, to base the pricing uh, on the level of interactivity. Yeah? Interesting, uh, interesting thought. And obviously pricing, especially when it comes to other messaging services, Mitch um, already mentioned USSD, RCS, becomes a very complex um, topic uh, where very, uh, every operator, and there we don't have to change geographies, even within Central Europe, um, has very different policies, very different approach. Um, but this is something we will have to leave for a different session, gentlemen. Yeah, but um, Mitch, you mentioned a couple of times other alternative uh, channels. I mean, that's that's also very interesting. I mean, um, Google is, let's say, attacking, you know, bypassing uh, the operator, enabling um, RCS through their Google guest program. Um, we have WhatsApp for business. Every second enterprise in the field is asking for it. I mean, if they would ever use it is a different question because obviously we know that restrictive policies apply, but at least there is curiosity. And what's the the answer that the operators have on 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 those let's say bypass technologies that would enable messaging for enterprise, but at the same time bypass the operator at all? Um, well, I think first of all, it's a positive in the sense that we can see that customers are valuing messaging as a channel. Um, so, although there are more competitors entering the market and we need to be aware of that. The good thing is that businesses are seeing the value in messaging um, independent of the channel. Uh, and so that's an opportunity for all of us. Um, we, in some of our countries, what we've, what we've seen is that we have, um, for instance, self-service platforms for small, medium businesses, and some of them already have WhatsApp plugged in. Uh, and I think kind of what you hinted at is kind of what we're seeing is that there's a lot of demand and a lot of interest but actually the usability from a business point of view isn't quite there yet. So we see a lot of people try it out, but not necessarily commit to it long-term. And that's also the feedback I've had from um, some of the bigger brands we've worked with as well. But um, in any case, I think what we're seeing is emergence of more messaging channels. There's a diversification of opportunities. And I think what we've seen with, with some of these 
omni-channel platforms we're testing out around the region is that you know customers want to be able to deal with messaging as a whole in you know one place if possible so i think you know multi-channel solutions uh cpas as kind of where we're heading in the future um is increasingly relevant and i think that's good news for all of us it's it's not necessarily going to be easy it's going to be a complex path to figure it out where we all fit in it um but i think you know that's that's good news all right that's uh, an optimistic um perspective um any any other views um and, and if we re relate it to the pandemic crisis um anything that is worth mentioning probably in the context of of, of rcs um, has something changed in terms of the initiatives of the market opportunity uh, from my perspective the the rcs has uh, yeah. not been prioritized because of the fact of course of our uh, handset penetration in a lot of our markets is uh, iphone driven uh, but i think also uh, the focus in this uh, COVID has been focused on uh, maintaining the capacity for other services so rcs has not been prioritized but i think overall to complement what mitch said um, on the um, a to p simplicity i think it's important that uh, we see that the other ecosystems and alternatives in the omni-channel approach are sometimes even more difficult to integrate than sms sms as such is a very simple very easy uh, way of distributing efficiently Whereas if you have six, seven, eight, nine options available uh, with now the uh, announcement um, from WhatsApp that they would uh, change the privacy, what has happened is that people look for alternatives, rightfully or not, that's reality. So that's mm -hmm. where uh, A2P SMS will maintain its position, coexisting with other uh, alternatives for sure, but it's a long-term uh, solution and will be remain there alongside other technologies and alternatives, but it will be there. Uh, I agree with Miguel. Uh, Miguel. Um, we, during the, during the whole crisis, uh, actually we didn't see any uh, new opportunity, at least uh, on Italia operations, um, uh, specifically on RCS or even WhatsApp. And that's, RCS is also uh, very similar to what Miguel was saying. It's also quite critical on our side because of a, uh, a uh, very uh, dominant uh, iOS uh, market. So it's quite difficult to move ahead with the RCS. We see good engagement, but the market itself is quite small um, when we talk, for example, about Sweden. Um, at the same time, WhatsApp is being quite um, expensive, we see it, uh, for, at least for the enterprise um, uh, business. So people are not engaging a lot on WhatsApp. Um, and during the during the crisis, we saw a big increase of the A2P, actually the SMS. So SMS was the one backing up everything, and we saw much more um, engagement with them. I mean, we have new customers, we have much more um, um, uh, volumes actually being delivered um, using SMS only. So we saw the strength of of the SMS uh, during this uh, COVID crisis. In the, in the same time, we didn't see any a big impact um, in other type of uh, technologies for, for messaging. Okay, good, fair enough. Um, probably um, in that context, uh, one question from the audience, uh, we, we have to give the audience um, a chance to. Um, will RCS cannibalize SMS? I think, to my view, um, if I may answer on this one, I think RCS is also a chance to uh, to to keep to keep the growth on the on on, on the messaging uh, trend on the messaging business because it will offer a great uh, experience to to user and it's a great tool for for enterprise to uh, to engage with their with their customer. So uh, I, I I don't think it will necessarily cannibalize uh, A2P messaging. It will go hand in hand because A2P can still back up. Uh, uh, RCS, uh, when, for instance, the, the, the handset cannot support when when you need to uh, still authenti authentify your, your service. So uh, short term, I don't imagine that it will cannibalize, but it will either help to, to keep uh, and nurture the growth on, uh, on A2P. Okay. Very good. Um, we have um, other questions. Um, James Williams is asking, um, how long will be A2P SMS uh, on the upward? 
So for how many years do you see SMS uh, still growing? Um, I'm not sure if he's referring to the revenues or the traffic, but um, let's uh, refer to the traffic. So this COVID, of course, has uh, yeah, increased the, the traffic uh, significantly because, of course, the use cases, certainly in the e-commerce, uh, have expanded. The use cases in health use cases have expanded, certainly on the national level. Of course, the impact uh, on the negative side was uh, the travel industry, uh, which is logic, but has more than be compensated by the e-commerce use cases. So I think uh, it will not grow as fast as used to, but uh, growth will still be there in the foreseeable future. I believe post-COVID will bring uh, um, good opportunity again for the market because at the same time we saw um, um, cases, traffic cases going up because of uh, parcels to be delivered and all these tracking services. The marketing campaigns, they decrease a lot. So once this crisis uh, is finished, uh, I believe the marketing campaigns will restart and people will start like investing again uh, in sending campaign over SMS. So I, I think it will uh, take off again. Uh, I mean, even more, if I can say. So we still have a good life for SMS, at least for, for the next five, five years, in my opinion. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I'd, I'd agree. So I think... Yeah. Uh, the, the uplift we've seen during COVID is likely to stay because I think you know some of the shifts around remote working, et cetera, are not likely to go away so quickly. I think going back to the new normal will also provide some kind of uplift as well in terms of you know people going back out into the world and you know making the most of it. And then I think whilst we get RCS to a level of maturity where it can really scale, I think SMS will hold firm. So I think kind of, as Fabio mentioned, I think the next five years, I think are, are relatively secure. Okay, so um, we continue receiving um, uh, questions and uh, I would like to um, address them. So um, Ira Cohen from MD Smart, uh, uh, he has a kind of a provocative one, I would say. Um, basically he's saying, why don't we adjust the, the pricing of A to P if I get it right, to the price level um, that are actually offered by sim farms. So um, we would um, avoid uh, all the in, in investment uh, in servers and firewalls, uh, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, that would probably lead to, to, a, to a more, I think, balanced pricing, I assume, is what he wants to say. Okay. Yeah. From my perspective, that answer is very straightforward. From a customer uh, protection perspective, we will not uh, enhance that uh, at all. Because, of course, what has happened with the strategy is that we've increased the pricing of A to P. Our customers receive less spam messages. So from a customer experience perspective, which is bottom line the most important for us as serving our customers, we will not uh, be doing that strategy at all. And I think, yeah, and I would add, it's not up to the MNO to, to get their pricing dictated by the one who wants to, to fraud. Huh? So I think it's, yeah. you should rather put the right technology in place to protect your network and protect your subscribers and, and monetize it in the in the right way rather than the, dragging the market to the level, lowest level possible because of fraud. Um, okay. I would also yes. just add quickly that mm -hmm. um, in the past, uh, when we've been implementing anti-fraud strategy in partnership with aggregators around the region, we have offered lower pricing mm. as a way to get um to help aggregators on board people blocked by our efforts um however promises very rarely live up to expectations so for instance uh the idea uh you know has its flaws in my opinion but um even if we did do that i think it's unlikely we'd see um all, all of you know that that traffic come on board you know quickly it, yeah. it, it from my experience lowering the pricing isn't a quick solution either yeah, yeah. I, I, but, I mean yeah sorry fabio no it's okay. uh, i i i agree with jerome and and, and Micho. Uh, um i think your your strength and price is uh, is very uh is direct to the also your capacity in protecting your network and avoid of course the whole bypass and, and everything right um it's um um, you may use pricing even to protect them against spam, but there are so many um, good solutions out there where you can also protect your network using the technology, not only the pricing strategy. 
Um, uh, I believe pricing also can depend on what type of service you are offering using the same channel. So even if we talk about only RCS or only uh, uh, SMS, you can define different pricing uh, based on different types of, uh, of traffic, which Jerome has, uh, has mentioned in the beginning of this discussion. So it's not, it's not as simple as it, again, as it sounds, because you don't define like a, a, a unique pricing. If you want to have like a good monetization strategy, you may also uh, work better and uh, in order to improve uh, your relationship with the enterprise, but also at the same time, improving the monetization for the mon uh, mobile operator. Good gentlemen, we have to come to an end. I'm sorry. I mean, the, 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 the discussion was just getting really, really interesting and I would like to continue and the audience the same. We cannot address the questions. Just as a um, conclusion, tell me for the next five years, monetization or productization? What should be the focus of operators? Mitch? Yep, yeah, product, evolving at Miguel? Product, absolutely. So we're uh, launching a number of new initiatives, so we will be full uh, on product. We're looking forward to see that. Jérôme? I agree with the product, but it should come along with the, the monetization as well. So I All think right. both are relevant. And the other. It's not one or the other. Fabio? I think productization will lead to better monetization, in my opinion. Ah, very diplomatic as always. <laughs> so. Gentlemen, I would like to thank you for your time, for participating, obviously, for trusting Matt, for trusting me. I would like to thank the audience. We had them from all over the world. Uh, very nice feedback. Sorry for not addressing all your questions. And I wish you a good time this afternoon and also tomorrow with this wonderful virtual conference of Math Connects. Stay healthy and we stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.